Hi, everyone. Today, let's talk about Microsoft. And we'll get straight into the charts and looking at Microsoft. It looks like they did well on earnings. And moving over to my account, still no positions, but did pretty well on trading throughout the session. And we'll talk about that after the charts. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays. So make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So Microsoft earnings. They beat on earnings, but they did not beat on revenues. So interestingly, earnings per share, $3.32, up from the expected $2.29. So continuing to beat on earnings. Revenues here, $52.75 billion versus the $52.94 billion expected, showing sales growth of 2.3% year over year. They do mention, however, that this is the weakest expansion for Microsoft in any period since 2016. So Microsoft is a very strong company and they continue to do well despite the tough conditions. But like they say here, their growth is slowing at least a little bit. Moving into the article here, they talk about the 10,000 jobs that Microsoft is going to cut. They already announced that prior to the earnings. And as of Monday, shares of Microsoft were down 18% the past year, slightly underperforming the NASDAQ, which is pretty interesting. This has to be because Microsoft was just pretty overvalued. They really continue to deliver in terms of their projections. And this earnings report is another example of that. They pretty much always meet earnings expectations, even if their revenue is close or slightly below. Talking about Azure, their biggest grower, up 31% versus the 35% from the previous quarter. So continuing slowdowns in Azure and cloud computing, that's pretty expected. And I think that's part of why their multiple has decreased here recently. They're just not growing as fast. And they talk about some layoffs and some hardware issues, as well as lease consolidations, resulting in a $1.2 billion charge or a $0.12 cents per share effect. So that just seems like some business things that they're doing, at least here in the short term. And then they talk about the Federal Trade Commission suing Microsoft over their acquisition of Activision Blizzard. They've been trying to move into the video game space for quite a while, and this is really their big play to do so. Still waiting to see what the result of that is. My guess is that they'll be able to purchase Activision and that this is kind of frivolous, but we still need to see what happens there. And then they talk about some contracts with the Defense Department resulting in a $9 billion contract. So it's always pretty good when you can interact with the government. Usually you get a good amount of money out of that. And Microsoft seems to be doing the right things there. So overall, slowed growth, miss on revenue, beat on earnings. Pretty good report here from Microsoft. I do want to go over the earnings calendar just for a moment, just to see how we did overall. You can see Microsoft beating on earnings, but missing on revenue. J&J did the same thing. DHR, I'm not familiar, but they beat on both. Verizon met on earnings, beat on revenue. Texas Instruments beat on both, so that's really solid. Raytheon missed on revenue, beat on earnings. Union Pacific missed on both. That's interesting. Makes sense why transportations were down a little bit. Lockheed Martin beat on both. GE beating on both, which is pretty interesting. Surgical missing on both. Canadian National Railway beat on both. That's interesting. And we have 3M missing on earnings and beating on revenue. And that's pretty much all the ones worth talking about here. Big companies seem to be doing fairly well, kind of mixed on revenue, but generally doing well on earnings. And then just taking a quick look at tomorrow, we have Tesla, Abbott Labs, NextEra Energy, pretty big company there, AT&T, IBM, Boeing. Really, we're just looking at Tesla, AT&T will be interesting, and then IBM and Boeing. Moving over to the S&P 500 on the hour and four hour, not a huge effect for Microsoft on the SPY. It is a big part of the SPY, but not nearly as big as it is for the NASDAQ. You can see it's up a little bit after hours, about a dollar. I still think we've probably topped here at 402. We might come up and test it, maybe overshoot it before we get that bigger push down. But here we got a sideways day, an inside day. I identified that pretty early on. So you pretty much could have bought or sold the highs and lows throughout the session and made money. And basically, we got a day of indecision here. Looking at momentum on the hourly, basically none. RSI slightly bearish below the EMA throughout the session. RSI on the four hour still slightly bullish, but momentum here on the four hour is starting to fade. And probably one or two sessions here, you would expect this to roll over. 
Moving over to the NASDAQ, the QQQ on the five minute and the four hour. I do want to look at the five minute here just to show what kind of chop we had. We established the high of day really early in the session and the low of day really shortly after. So good trade here in the middle of the day. And then pretty much all the highs and lows you could have bought or sold. And that's basically what I did throughout the session. I didn't get every single move, but overall, pretty much buying the lows and selling the highs. It was a pretty good strategy throughout the day. And then I closed all of my positions before going into the after hours. I knew the NASDAQ would be pretty strongly affected by Microsoft one way or the other. And since Microsoft was strong, you can see this pretty big push up in the after hours. Went from about 288.50 all the way up to 290.50. So about a $2 move. Big move here on NASDAQ. I don't know necessarily this is going to hold into tomorrow's session. Definitely be interesting to see. Of course, we have Tesla earnings coming out tomorrow, which will be big. We'll have to pay attention closely to that. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow on the hourly charts. Not much to say here. Pretty much sideways price action throughout the day here for the Russell. Did look pretty weak here into the end of the day. And really all the major indices did, but then they got propped up a little bit by Microsoft. Microsoft obviously not in the Russell 2000, so we have pretty good weakness here. The Dow perking up here after hours and pretty much finishing at the high of the day. Like I said, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out going into tomorrow's session. Looking at RSI ticking down here for the Russell, still slightly bullish here on the Dow. Momentum pretty weak, but slightly bullish and then pretty weak on the Russell as well, but slightly bearish. And based on this price action here now, we're pretty much locked into a range. So on the Russell, you're looking for anything breaking out above the 188 level or anything breaking below this 186 level. If we break out in either direction, you have to assume that there's going to be quite a bit of movement in either direction. My guess is that it's going to be to the downside after the huge rally that we had the past couple of days. But really, those are the two levels we're looking for. Interestingly here enough on the Dow, Looking at the price levels, we did actually slightly break the previous high, which is interesting. The Dow has been lagging, but here today, the Dow did make a slightly higher high on an intraday basis as well as a closing basis, a slightly bullish day, despite the fact that the S&Ps and the NASDAQ both had inside days. Moving over to Apple and Tesla, let's put these both on the one hour chart here. Basically, both of them had inside days. Gap down, filled the gap here on Apple, could not get above the previous day's highs. Was a slightly positive day though, so we closed above the previous close, pretty much right at the highs here. So we're still looking at that 143 level as the next level of breakout. We're going to see if this trend continues here tomorrow. Tesla, I expect to go sideways into earnings. Momentum was bearish throughout the day, despite the fact that we didn't really move down. Slightly bearish throughout the session, but really finished flat on the day. And really, this all depends on Tesla earnings going into tomorrow after hours. In terms of RSI, slightly bearish on RSI. Apple is just above the EMA here. Tesla is well below the EMA. Definitely looks negative. And momentum here on Apple even is slightly bearish, but not very. But momentum is, is extremely weak. Moving over to Microsoft on the four hour and the daily chart. You can see we did fill all the gaps here on the daily chart. Going all the way back to 21 December here, the daily chart doesn't show the after hours, but looking at the pricing, we're all the way up here at 252.20. So above this resistance, above the 144 EMA on the daily chart, you would expect this to at least test the 200 SMA tomorrow, which is currently sitting at 255.64. So a couple of points of upside potential there. That's where we rejected here on 13 December as well. Got into that 200 SMA on the daily before we got pretty strong rejection. That's where you have to expect we're going to go. And if we do get up to that level, we do have this gap here on this island reversal that certainly could get filled. Again, indicating that we should at least get up to the 200, probably fill that gap up to 256.99, 257. And if we do get a move like that, that's going to pull the queues higher with it. But be careful because Tesla shares and Tesla earnings have rallied into earnings and oftentimes buy the rumor, sell the news. And when that news comes out, Tesla shares definitely could move down in a big way, and that would take the NASDAQ with it. So you have to be careful trading the Microsoft move higher and watching for that Tesla earnings on Wednesday after hours. Moving over to consumer staples and consumer discretionary here. So staples actually making a higher high here today, showing some strength, got up to that 55 EMA on the hourly chart. Definitely interesting to see. That has not been the case. Staples have not been leading the way here. But discretionary went sideways here today, inside day. 
Momentum fading, RSI ticking down despite having pretty even price action throughout the day. So weakness here in discretionary and strength here on consumer staples. It's definitely what you would like to see if you expect shares to go down. But then you get moves like Microsoft pushing to the upside and taking the S&P and the NASDAQ with it. So definitely have to keep an eye out for that. Couple of mixed signals here, but it looks like we're going to get the cross here on discretionary. On the hourly, you would expect this to move down. Quite a bit, potentially retesting these lows down at 135. That'd be about a $6 move from where we are now. And if discretionaries are selling off, you have to assume that growth is going to sell off with it, which is a big part of the NASDAQ. Moving over to the transports here on the hour and the four hour. Transports basically did not participate. They got on really big, tried to fill the gap, didn't quite get there, and then sold at the end of the session. So transports showing a lot of weakness. This is in pretty stark contrast to the Dow. The Dow was moving slightly higher here today. Transports did move lower, indicating some weakness to come, in my opinion. We did leave a gap up here, so be aware of that. Maybe we bounce where we're at, fill the gap, and then we get the bigger push down. But right now, transportations are showing that we are going to be topping out and moving lower here. And this really looks like a pretty solid double topping pattern at this point. Big top, blow off, slight weakness, double top here at this point selling off into weakness and if this starts to break below this 225 226 level in this zone then you have to expect the rest of the markets are going to be going with it and that gives us a price target closer to this 225 level which would be a pretty big move from where we are right now moving over to semiconductors not a lot gap down filled the gap briefly sideways throughout the session went negative on momentum on the hourly got decreasing positive momentum here on the 4 hour started to tick down on RSI a little bit nothing major to report here do not have divergence we did make a higher RSI read versus the previous high we've moved down here on RSI but we have moved down in price action if we do get a slight push higher here and we get a lower RSI read on the daily chart that would be a good indicator that we're going to be moving lower and that certainly seems possible we could get a nice swing up maybe touch or slightly take out those highs get a lower RSI read to establish that divergence and then that should be a good indicator that we're going to be rolling over here it's not the same kind of double topping pattern so you can't quite trade it the same But it's certainly possible we get some divergence here and start to roll over and at least come down and tag this 227 level, which would be about $10 of downward price action from where we are now. Moving over to the 10-year government yield. Basically, not a lot to say here. Did rally in the middle of the day, sold off really aggressively immediately after, and then sold off slightly into the end of the session. We did get back below the 200 SMA on the hourly chart, which is not good if you are a bear. Looking at RSI here, this definitely looks pretty bearish. We have these wide sweeping down moves. We rallied, got below the MA, retraced and moved down. Similarly rallied, got below the MA, retraced here in the middle, came back and retested that zone and continue to fail here. So right now we're kind of stuck between this three and a half to three and a third percent at this point. And we're waiting to see exactly what's going to come out. Maybe we come into this 342 zone bounce from there and get a higher move break out above this 350 level maybe we stay here until we get the quarter percent from the FOMC pretty much could go either way at this point just watching to see what happens but we're not getting the breakout that we kind of hoped for moving over to the dollar pretty much the same story broke out here in the middle of the day pretty interesting pretty strong sold off really aggressively unfortunately and finished just below that 102 level So right now, not showing much of anything, continuing to go sideways, slightly bearish here. Cannot get above that hourly 200 SMA or the 55 here on the EMA on the four hour. Not much. Continues to stay flat. Pretty much probably going to sit here until we get the FOMC minutes, but otherwise slightly bearish here on the dollar going forward. Moving over to Jane on the hour and the daily chart. You can see we gapped down, filled the gap, rallied into the middle of the day, fell slightly on the last hour of the day. Momentum on the day chart is still moving down. RSI over the last few days has been flat. Certainly looks like we might get a fill of the gap here. The day overall was slightly positive and looked quite strong, but momentum is fading here. Certainly could get a push up, fill the gap, and then a breakdown. Maybe we get a double topping style pattern. But right now, with the way that momentum is looking, I would guess that we won't fill the gap. Probably stuck below this 93.55 level, which is right on the daily 9 EMA. 
And if we do get a breakdown below the daily 200, then we have to be looking at this 92 level once again. Moving over to TLT, pretty much rallied throughout the session. Gapped up, filled the gap, touched that 4-hour 55 EMA, and then rallied from there. Looked quite strong throughout the session, which is pretty interesting. You would think that TLT would be a little bit weaker going into the FOMC meeting. Seems like people think they're going to do 25 basis points, and that yields are pretty much going to taper off after that. And so people are buying bonds, trying to get those yields while they're still pretty solid. And you can see momentum on the 4-hour looks quite strong. Probably going to cross into green tomorrow. And then momentum on the hourly is still quite strong as well. So it looks pretty good here on TLT. If we do get back up to this 108 level, you're looking for a, a gap fill of 108.55, somewhere in that zone. And now we have a solid bottom set in here at 105.60. So those are the two levels we're looking to see. Could get a move up and a double top, but we'd expect it to come back and fill this gap at this point. We have a gap here as well, sitting at 108, and then this one up here at 108.60 or so. Moving over to the volatility index, not much to say. Continue to be in this downward pattern that we've been trekking. Had that big push up here on Thursday the 19th. Since then, we've been creating lower lows and, and lower highs. And right now, you have to expect that that's going to continue. Seems like we're coming back down into this 18.25, maybe down to the 18 level. Unless we get some kind of bounce or something to happen, which could be Tesla earnings, you never know. But right now, this still looks pretty weak and like it's going to fall into tomorrow. Moving over to my accounts, you can see I did pretty well, up about $1,200, almost $1,300. I pretty much did what I said. I sold the highs and bought the lows for the most part, pretty much swing trading the ups and the downs. Kind of suspected early on that we were going to get a sideways day, so that's how I traded it. And it worked out throughout the session. Right now, I don't think we have any clear direction. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Microsoft if that holds up the NASDAQ and we start to make some higher highs. Of course, Tesla earnings coming out tomorrow could certainly push it right back down. And looking at the options for tomorrow, you would expect that it's going to go a little bit lower, probably somewhere in that 286, 287 range at some point tomorrow. That's my guess. Slightly bearish, but not overly bearish going into tomorrow. Slightly bearish, but not overly bearish going into tomorrow. Let me know down in the comment section what you think Microsoft earnings is going to do to the markets. Are we going to rally from here because we think tech is doing well? Or is Tesla earnings tomorrow going to tank the markets? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. I make this video every single day. The markets are open as well as Sundays. So make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.